Hello everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Great Basin National Park Bio Blitz. This is the second part of the Sternorinka series, which is the last lecture series for Hemiptera. And in this video, I'm going to be covering a few of the families in Sternorinka. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, my name is Amy Springer, I'll be the instructor today for this video, and I am a graduate student at Utah State University. I study evolution and ecology in insects, mainly in beetles and butterflies, but I like all bugs, which is why I'm here. And without any other things to say about myself, I guess we'll go ahead and get started with Sternorinka Part 2. Just to reorient you to where we're at in the Hemiptera family tree, uh, Hemiptera is the order we're considering for this 2020 bio blitz. They are the true bugs. And in this video, I'll be covering the first two families I have listed here for suborder Sternorinka. Allirotidae are the white flies, and aphididae are the aphids. Starting with the white flies, Allirotidae, as you can see, white flies basically look like their name suggests they should. They are very small, they are white, and they look kind of like flies, though I will note that these are true bugs, hemipterans, not flies. Flies are their own group, and these are not flies. It's unfortunate, but a lot of the common names for insects have problems like that, where things that are flies are not called flies, or things that are not flies are called flies, it's fairly common, so just know that these are called white flies, they are not true flies. So a few characteristics about the life history and ecology of white flies. While the adults have wings, as you saw in the previous photo, the nymphs are sessile, meaning they don't move at all. So as I mentioned in my first video, a lot of Sternorinkins are just not good at moving. They're kind of the couch potatoes of uh, bugs. And on this picture here in the right, you see that this is a white fly nymph, and they don't look like much at all. They look like little blobs with little pokers sticking out of the sides, uh, kind of like a little sunburst or an amoeba or something. Um, they really don't look like bugs, and that, again, is really common in the Sternorinkins. White flies are an important crop pest of uh, tobacco, cotton, and cruciferous plants. Like most Sternorinkins, there are a number of species in the white flies that are really important crop pests. And crucifers, uh, cruciferous vegetables include things like cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi. Um, white flies are largely tropical, but over time, humans have transported them all over the world, and they're now found in colder regions as well, mainly in greenhouses. White flies are a very common greenhouse pest. They are very, very small. They have fully developed hind wings, unlike some of our other families. And one of the really cool things about white flies is their eyes are restricted into upper and lower halves. And this is a really unique thing. It's not found in many insects at all. It's found in a few aquatic insects for which it makes sense because the upper half of the eye can look, be adapted to look at the air, look through the air and see things that are on land, while the bottom portion of the eye can be adapted to see well underwater. So if they're swimming along the surface, they have a view of both sides of their world. But in white flies, they don't do any swimming. They hardly even walk, so uh, we really don't know why they have split eyes like this. It's very unusual, it's very rare in insects, and white flies have it for some unknown reason. So just to take a look a little closer at some of these identification characteristics, like most Sternorinkins, they have one or two tarsimeres. Uh, this particular family will have fully developed unmodified hind wings that are in no way attached to the front wing. Some of the Sternorinkins, like aphids, will have wings that are sort of hooked together. Um, 
alley rodents will not. Their wings will be fully separated, no connection between the front and hind wing. And again, that really cool characteristic is that partially split eye. Their eyes are restricted in the center, making them look kind of like an eight shape. It's sort of an hourglass shaped eye. In some species, they are so restricted that it actually looks like the white flies have four eyes instead of just two. Here's a picture of a real white fly, and again, it's white, and you can see that it has that beak near the back of the head, as all hemipterans will have. It has filamentous long antennae, looks kind of like a thread coming out of their head, two tarsomeres in this case, and that characteristic restriction between the upper and lower half of the eye. There's that hourglass-shaped eye. And just to give you a reference for size, um, white flies are really, really small. And in fact, most Sternorhynchins are really, really small. So on this leaf here, all of these little tiny white specks, those are all white flies. And they are just some of the tiniest bugs you're going to be able to find. And a quick comparison to finish off this family, on the left you will see a white fly and on the right you will see a drain fly. The white fly of course is white and this is because they have uh, wax that is produced on their cuticle. The cuticle is basically the outer skin of the insect, it's their shell. And it produces this white fluffy wax as is common in Sternorhynchins and that's what gives it this white appearance. Drain flies, while they're not white, look kind of similar in body type. So you might find one of these in your house and think, gee, is that a hemipteran? But no, in fact, the drain fly is a true, real fly, and it only has two wings, which is characteristic of real flies. If you catch a house fly in your house, it will only have two wings. White flies, on the other hand, are not flies. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's confusing, but White flies are not flies, and they have four wings. So, just to make clear, even though there's some overlap here in characteristics, white flies are definitely very different than drain flies. Drain flies are something you might find in your house. They're fairly common. They do, in fact, come out of drains. They'll come out of your kitchen sink. Their larvae might feed in food in your, uh, in your garbage disposal, and they have this annoying habit of, uh, I know we're supposed to be talking about hemipterans, but drain flies have this annoying habit of coming out at night and drowning themselves in your water glass by the side of your bed. This has happened to me. It's not the most fun. They're really cute looking guys, but not what you want to drink at night. So, with all that said, let's move on to the aphids. So aphids are family aphididae and they are one of the most well-known of the Sternorhynchins. Anybody who has an interest in gardening or farming is probably familiar with the damage that aphids can do. So, a few really cool life history traits about aphids that I've picked out. Uh, aphids are one of the few insects that will produce live young. So, aphids can actually give birth. Many of them are clonal. They are often farmed by ants which means that uh, aphids will produce honeydew, which is a sugary substance that is basically the byproduct of them having to drink tons and tons of plant sap to get the amount of protein that they need. Insects are comprised largely of protein, so they need a high protein diet. Aphids, unfortunately, they're sucking plant sap, which has almost no protein. And so they just have to drink a ton of it, leaving a bunch of unnecessary carbohydrates, sugars, and water in their body that they can't use and don't need. So they expel it, and that becomes the food for the ants, which in return will often protect and take care of the aphids colonies. Aphids are also um, a little bit unusual with regard to hemipterans, but similar to other sternorhynchins, in that they live in colonies. Many Sternorhynchins are found in large colonies, including aphids. 
Aphids are of uh, economic importance because they carry a large number of plant viruses. They, like mosquitoes that carry West Nile, aphids carry viruses that are devastating to plant species, so they are the mosquito vector of viruses for plants. And just another really cool note, they are often attacked and mummified by parasitic wasps, which is just really cool, and I'll show you a few pictures of that in a couple slides. So, identification of aphids. Um, the main character that I'm going to touch on just lightly here is the fact that aphids almost always have two cornicles, which are these little uh, sort of Shrek-like horns on the backside of their abdomen. And these cornicles, contrary to popular belief, are not used for um, expressing honeydew or that sugary substance they feed to ants, but instead they are used for releasing pheromones. And this is just a quick picture showing uh, a scene you might be able to find near you. This was taken in southern Idaho, and this is a carpenter ant that's farming a colony of aphids that are living on sagebrush. And finally, the parasitic wasps. Many of you have probably seen wasps outside your house and around your yard, but parasitic wasps are really, really small. Pictured on the right is a picture of a parasitic wasp next to my finger. So if you take a look at the grooves on your uh, fingerprint, that's about how wide some of these parasitic wasps are. They are almost microscopic. And then on the left, you can see that little tan sphere next to the tiny little wasp in the picture. That is an aphid mummy. And this is how devastating these wasps can be to a colony of aphids. So what happens is the wasps, these little tiny parasitic wasps, will come and land on an aphid who can't really run away because aphids can barely walk like most Sternorhynchans. They are really slow. They have no chance against a wasp. So a wasp will lay an egg on the aphid's back or inside the aphid's body, and then the larva of the wasp will hatch and basically eat the aphid alive from the inside out. And when the wasp matures, it will break open the empty aphid and fly away. And that's what you can see here. All of these large ballooned up hollow aphids are mummies created by wasps that have emerged from inside the aphid's body. And this is a popular form of biocontrol for aphids. And finally, a scene you might see near you if you turn over the underside of a leaf, you might see multiple different kinds of aphids. So, in this picture, all of the aphids you see are likely the same species, but they come in different forms. So if conditions are really crowded and there's not enough food for a young aphid, it will cause a developmental switch to turn on in their DNA that will cause them to grow up and develop wings so that they can fly away and find a new source of food. On the other hand, if there is lots of food to spare and there's no competition for a uh, plant sap, then that developmental switch will not turn on, causing the aphid to develop into the typical sedentary wingless form, in this case the green aphids that you see. And finally, the little brown spheres that you see, those are aphid mummies. And the little white specks that you see all around these different types of the same species of aphid, those are their shed skins, where they have shed while they're growing into the new instar, and they basically walk out of their own skin. So that's what those little white specks are. And that's all about all I have for you about aphids and white flies, and for the last three families, uh, take a look at the final Sternrankin video. See you there.